I'm Louise Wilson and I'm Jane Wilson. We're here at IWM Doxford and we're uh, looking at this extraordinary First World War aerial camera. We were fortunate enough to work with this camera for a piece of work that we made for the Imperial War Museum which was commissioned in 2014 and it was a piece called Undead Sun. The elimination of the shadow is the essence of invisibility. Seeing it this way as though from above, appreciating all its lines and vectors, its vertical and horizontal axis. So the work was for, to um, commemorate the centenary of the First World War. When we began our research, we were looking a lot at aerial technology and it's so intriguing to think the First World War led to advances in optics and in new technologies because it was the first time that you had that potential to view uh, panoramically from above. Um, also intriguing that you think at the same time that you know uh, there were advances in aerial photography, there were also advances in countermeasures. And countermeasures at that time would have involved camouflage, um, camouflage exactly, and subterfuge. and subterfuge, exactly. So we referenced um, a book called uh, Hide and Seek by Hannah Rochelle, and that looks at camouflage. And there's some intriguing quotes where they talk about the elimination of the shadow as the essence of invisibility. Well, that's exactly what this camera would have been documenting, would have been actually looking at, picking out the camouflage elements that might be on the landscape below. Yeah, and I think we're very interested in that concept of insectoid psychosis, where something blends into its background and becomes part of its environment. Yeah. And so it is almost, you know, aping where it is in terms of the natural environment, and so it becomes invisible through that. So there's all those, those questions about um, camouflage simulation. And I guess now you just, as Louise was saying, it's a precursor to so much of the technology of modern war warfare now. It's, it's interesting because it's like pointing the lens down onto the view from above, which is something you don't normally see, and it's projecting it up through a, through a mirror and reflecting it back. There's something about that process that just constantly inverts and, and, and makes you consider the idea of where something is, um, you know, uh, camouflaged or real. And exactly, so it makes you realise that on the ground you're only able to hide if you're able to imagine the view of yourself as seen from above. Yeah, and I think it's interesting the idea that something would be tracking you from above was mm. a brand new concept to consider at that point. And there was a lot of interesting things to consider as well about how, especially from above, the way that they use deception in terms of creating fake tanks and fake rail tracks and other things that you would see in the landscape which would probably be very crude if you came up to it close but obviously they worked brilliantly from air. So all of those elements became an important focus in terms of our thinking and so it was extraordinary to have this camera here uh, which seemed to sort of manifest all of that early technology. When we do feature it in the film it's much more um, as um, an artifact I think like you said, it's just that encounter with seeing something that physically really exists from that point and, and from that moment. Duxford is an extraordinary place to come and visit because you are very aware of the kind of historical resonance of the, the buildings here and also I think you are with the objects as well. You sort of feel the sort of weight of that history but also the way to the fact that it's been handled the numerous number of times that it has and you can sort of see the traces of that a little bit more in a way. And it's interesting as an aerial camera, it is a handheld camera. So it's something that isn't fixed and located. It's much more of a kind of free flowing roaming camera, which we really loved about it, but also the but also the, the idea that perspective is the way that you point and shoot is echoed through the actual design, but also through the idea of the camera as a weapon, which is what it sort of yeah. mirrors. It's like a gun. And then the, um, the, this, this trigger here opens the shutter at the back and so exposes the film. And actual fact, when we did get a chance to show the camera when we made our film, we were able to kind of work the mechanism. The sound is this extraordinary sound of the shutter. 
It features quite prominently in the edit of the film as well, so it really punctuates points. It's also, it's also really redolent of um, animating um, an archived object in a sense that puts you really quite particularly in, uh, you know, in, in a sense of a moment of time over a hundred years ago. In the film itself we look at not only um, at the idea of aerial imagery but also um, of wind flows and so we filmed um, in the back against the backdrop of a giant wind tunnel in Farnborough. So yeah there's a lot of things that we wanted to kind of conflate in terms of looking at the camera but also looking at aerodynamics and seeing that through the way that the lenses impact, the way you visualise but also the way that wind flow is also um, travels through space. So we referenced um, images from uh, the Imperial War Museum archive and kind of recreated or reconstructed some of uh, the tableaus of the images that we found in the archive. Um, these were all shot against uh, the backdrop of um, a giant wind tunnel and so um, when Jay mentions about air flows and aerial this became a kind of uh, running sort of image if you like. So there's something about that idea of optics and space and also things that are in the air that travel through the air that aren't necessarily visible but that are superimposed over the image so that when you come to see this object you begin to appreciate why it, it has such a kind of powerful message in terms of what it yeah. was. And I think it's back to that statement that, you know, the elimination of the shadow is the essence of invisibility and that's where a lot of this impulse to photograph from aerial photography came.